All right, guys, my guest today is my good friend, Anthony Samaroff, who is a counselor, therapist, life coach, part-time yogic shaman, the uh, host <laughs> of the Be Yourself and Love It podcast, which you can find on iTunes, and the co-host of the Scottish Liberty podcast. And he's also, um, as of recently, the finished author of the Procrastination Annihilation, A Happy Ending to Human Tragedy book. Congratulations on finishing your book, sir. Thank you. It's actually Scottish, not Finnish, but um, I'm glad that it's done and it's available <laughs> to download for free from beyourselfandloveit.com forward slash do it. So I hope everyone will grab their book on overcoming procrastination and read it and it will help them. And the point here is don't delay. Um, open a new browser window right now while you're listening to this and uh, stop procrastinating and, and download the book on not procrastinating. So yeah, um, we'll, we'll still be here. We'll, st <laughs> we'll wait. We'll wait. So what can you tell uh, my viewers about the, the sort of essential message that you want to get through to them in the book? You know, what, what have you discovered that um, you're able to offer to people without, you know, reading the book aloud to us? <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, I guess it goes through five quite rational, rational rising, um, changes in mindset that are required but the most important thing is really it's a practical step-by-step -step method to take you from where you are now to where you'd like to be productively and to I guess the essential message would be the first change in mindset which is um, the all or nothing thinking where people think they have to change all at once otherwise there's no point in changing anything and if they do one little thing it doesn't matter because they can't really trust themselves to do it tomorrow or um, you know people will think even if they feel motivated now to do one small thing they might discount it because they're afraid that they'll kind of go back to default setting and that will be, you know, there's, I always remember that, that lyric by that band, James, that goes, uh, now I, hey, they've got your name, now I've swung back down again, it's worse than it was before, if I hadn't seen such riches, I could live with being poor, and anyone that's struggled around creative projects know the feeling of getting a great rush and being able to work on something for several hours, and oh, it's great, and, and, and everyone's looking for that feeling of being passionately engaged in what they're doing, but that is not really a change in your character structure, which, um, no offense to your character structure, but if you're not um, being as productive as you would like to be, um, it requires a change. And the book teaches you to do that in a really piecemeal way um, so that you can adjust to the change. I'm still working on building certain routines into my life that are challenging. The difference is there's a whole bunch of things that I do every day that a few years ago were challenging to me. I do breathing exercises and meditation in the morning. I journal every day. I rarely miss a day. I was writing two, three hours a day when I was working on the book. Now I still write an hour a day. Um, and I have to say, like in years gone by, it could work. It could take me weeks to build up to doing a writing session. So the fact that I'm able to have these disciplines of which those are some examples in my everyday life has demonstrated to me that I can make a change once so I've got more faith. Once one change is locked in, it could be the smallest thing, flossing your teeth um, or something like that. Once that. Once you're used to doing that one thing, it's no longer difficult for you. It's a habit. We all know habits are hard to change. You you definitely know that if you're a procrastinator because the habit of procrastination is not only hard to change, it's really depressing. And the fact that it's depressing isn't enough to change you. But it's the same. You can get your habits to work for you. So the book helps you craft a program of action that you can take to lock in little changes that add up over time. And it's not an all or nothing thing, but, you know, small, small things make perfection, but perfection is no small thing. A few little, a few little changes. Imagine you were doing six things, six little things that you're not doing now um, in three or four months from now every day. Like you'd be, your, your, your whole day would be completely different. You know, you, you, your productivity in comparison to what it is now would be 
far greater and you'd also have the experience and the conception that you could improve it again in future. I right, guess so that's the main message. Yeah. Mm, yeah, that's great. And is your um, is your sort of framework based on trying to create, as you say, the small changes like building um, routines of minor things as a foundation upon which to add more complex or or demanding tasks once you kind of have a bit of a rhythm in your in your life. Yeah, the ultimate method of the book is that um, I wouldn't. Uh, that that's that's basically the ultimate method of the book. It's th- that's what I'm saying. The book's very practical. There's no sorcery in it, although you know some of that stuff is pretty cool. But you won't get everything that you can get just out of knowing that. The book is full of little tips and tricks and tools and ways of looking at the world to make this as easy as possible for you. It's laid out in a very practical fashion. Uh, The books, like, if I may say so myself, it's a very pleasant read. One of the main things that I consistently got feedback on is the tone of the book. It's nicely written, and it's got my sense of humor in it as well. You you will will get a few laughs. Yes, I noticed that in the first first few pages, I was already smiling and and, and Uh, reading it in your accent. (laughs) Oh, good, good. Well, yeah, like, there's some laughs there, but more than that, okay, it is a worthwhile thing to read the book, even if you've gone, well, yeah, okay, now I know the method, I'll just do something until it's a habit, and then I'll add another thing. You probably won't. Uh, Mm. You should read the book, because reading the book itself is a practice, and it's good to read the book while you've still got the problem. Like, you could read it once, and then you could read a couple of pages. It's very short. It takes about two hours to read. So you could continue to read it, highlight, bookmark the pages that are relevant to you, and read them every so often while you've still got the problem, because they will help you internalize the main concepts and especially the changes in mindset because you you know when you read something and you go oh yeah that's so true yeah i should remember that but it's just something you've read it it doesn't um enter your programming your software but the thing is if you read it and then you try one of the techniques of which there are many um through the book then after a while, you get some first-hand experience of that. It's anchored. It becomes part of you who you are. And in order to assimilate the changes in mindset, which are a little bit trickier than the practical stuff, but really help with the practical stuff, it will be of value to you to you know to see it written down there in front of you and identify the bits that are most relevant to you. And it's free yeah. as well, so you can, you can get it at beyourselfandloveit.com forward slash do it. Do it. Do it now. Do uh, it. Free. So Do it there's now. nothing to lose. So um, are you looking at um, releasing this as a, as a print book or an audio book with your dulcet Scottish tones at some point? Well, here, so a print, I guess um, I'm working with a publicist and her um, shtick is to work, have an offic- official book launch. So for, for Kindle and for, I guess, a print book. So that'll be later on in the year, and that's more so that I can get in the press uh, here because they like it when it's, you know, oh, it's a book launch. So mm, yeah. th- that yeah. would be happen. Audiobook will definitely be in the pipeline at some stage. Oh, please excuse me. Um, I plan on having an audiobook. I'm not sure if I'm going to read it out. Um, I, I, I've had a couple of offers. It might be quite interesting to see if someone reads it differently from how I would read it. Mm, yeah, especially when the the text is sort of, you know, full of your personality as it is. I, I would be interested to hear somebody becoming you as a character uh, uh-huh. in the way that it's read. It's it's certainly not a cold academic text. It's got a lot of mm. uh, a lot of personality to it, which which I've enjoyed in, in the amount that I've read so far. Let's talk a bit more about procrastination in, in general, because I'm sure you've, well, I know that the, the introduction of your book you get quite a bit into your personal journey from procrastinating on some very um you know large and you know painful things from your past that you know you yeah missed for out sure on. and uh and i think that's a great way to lay it out and say look you know i experienced this you do everyone does on yeah. some level or another but i'm sure as yeah. a therapist you've probably seen that there are many different kinds of procrastination like i know i'm not i'm always busy i'm always right. being productive 
but I, that doesn't mean I don't procrastinate because what I do is I fill my life with so many projects right. that I can procrastinate on any one of them by shifting my focus. Yeah. yeah it's like you might do the, it's productive procrastination. You mm. might do the, the less, you know, the, the, the less important task. You know, hey man, I can't do my tax return right now. I'm writing my book, all right? <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Or vice yeah. versa. <laughs> okay, yeah, I can't do my book yet because I've got to. And that's what, it's amazing how quickly people can get to tidying the room and cleaning the dishes and, and stuff mm. like that. They usually avoid when they've got a paper due or something like that, you <laughs> yes. know? So, so yeah, how do you prioritize think... things when you're someone like me? You know, how, how would you oh, approach okay. that as a therapist? Mm, that's a good question. Well, first of all, it would be good to have a catalog. Very, I say in the book, anything that is nebulous and vague creates unnecessary resistance. And sometimes, for some reason, I think it's... I very much tie procrastination up with anxiety. I believe that when we are avoiding tasks we're not avoiding the tasks themselves we're avoiding the emotions associated with the tasks sometimes it can be anxiety like creative work is particularly difficult because oh i need to like open my mind and like i need to change my mood i need to shift gears into this like open mood and i don't know what i'm going to think and maybe my mind starts going quickly and i might forget something important and like i i also i don't know where it's going to go say when you're reading writing your book i used to write plays when i was in university and one of the things is i had a vague idea of how a scene should go but i didn't have the nuts and bolts of it and like surrendering to the flow of writing that scene would be like the most amazing feeling in the world but it was also so anxiety provoking because I was scared that it wouldn't work out or I didn't know how it was going to work out. Does any of this sound familiar to you? Yeah, I can definitely relate um, to that. You know, within the process of writing my book, I um, I would suffer from that freeze before writing the first sentence. Um, okay. And it wouldn't it wouldn't necessarily be that I sit down and I and I and I can't type. I would be putting off and delaying making that mm. time to sit down and write. Yes. Because because of this weird, irrational, emotional yeah. feeling that I don't know what the chapter looks like and yeah. done, and I'm afraid yeah. to get into it. But I, I found that yeah. um, wh whatever it was in me that was able to, you know, find the will each time to just go, well, mm. now's my time to write. As soon as I got mm. the first sentence out, which was always slow, mm. then then I was in it, you know, and the rest nice. of the chapters flowed very easily. So it's it was just getting out the gate for me with each chapter that, that was always difficult. And I'd never walk away from writing until I'd finished a chapter. That was just, you know, once I get into it, I have to get to the end of the chapter to feel that satisfaction. So. Oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you knew how you worked. Well, I mean, one thing there would be to see if you can make a deal with yourself and agree to just write one sentence. And it's, it goes like this. It's just like, well, sit down, and I'll see if I can write one sentence. And if I'm not enjoying myself, then I'm allowed to get up after that. You know, so you can make deals with yourself. That's one way to circle back to your original question, which is how you prioritize things. OK, so you want things to be clear so they're not nebulous and vague, so they don't create resistance. So you need to have a clear view of what all your projects are. It would be nice to have a A4 page with them written out, uh, get a ring binder. And then in order, um, in the order that you've placed them on the first page, you can write it out first in any order and then you can write them out in order of priority if, if it's intuitive to you. Um, have a sheet of paper corresponding to each one, um, basically what what needs to be done in rough order. And these, these things should be updated. Do you know what I mean? You don't need to get them... They don't need to be accurate because you don't always know everything you need to do in the right order. You just need to do know some of the things you can do because one thing that really blocks people is, oh, well, I don't know what to do with Section 7A uh, and that's scary, so I'm not even going to bother when actually you do know what to do with Sections 3, A, B, and C. And if you did them, they'd give you more information and by the time you got to that section, you don't know what to do with it. You would know what to do with it. So it's... Being very aware of what you can work on and what you can. Now, um, I would go through a pro if you've got some free time. I go through the process of basically what's the 
most important thing to you that you can realistically work on at the moment like and check that one out can you do that is that the most important thing do you want to do it if you are struggling and you can do it then don't let that stop you doing something easier you know because you're still building the muscle like you can do the second most important thing if you can't do that do the third most important thing like some people like brian tracy um uh, he's a personal development expert i've really admired for many years he wrote a book called eat the frog and he said just do the most do the hardest thing for yeah just do the hardest thing first get out of the way because the whole day will be easier well that's fine for brian tracy he's a very conscientious individual and if he wants to do something he just does it but i don't under don't think he understands the struggles that some of us you know the first world problems that some of us uh, go through when it comes to just being able to so the whole which i mean that not you know we we oughtn't diminish them either um and how um how much of a painful impact they have on people's oh, lives. Yeah, I know, the, I know some horrendous. people who are a whole other kind of procrastinator to me who, mm. where their procrastination consumes them so much that they're, they're yeah. not productive at anything yeah. um, meaningful, you know, and, and, and it leads to it's, depression, I think, or it's part of oh, depression. Oh, it's so depressing. It's so depressing. It is a th- it's a thief of human potential. It makes people feel like garbage, but obviously it will because it's basically the opposite of being in the flow state when you're, like completely fully engaged in something and you're giving it your everything and it's just like awesome like what a feeling of rush what an exhilaration and you're basically at the opposite polar end of that feeling where you can't you know you can't start the car it keeps stalling so Mm -hmm. yeah please definitely send them the book hopefully they won't procrastinate over reading it the whole book is a series of ramps to make things that would otherwise be difficult easier for you right you can't get from here to here no one can do it it's too big a jump but you know with a series of like roads that lead up the mountain and then sometimes you dip down but but the 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 general direction is up and uh, you know i'm if someone gave me this book when i was in school like i'd probably be a multi-millionaire by now or something at least more <laughs> famous than, at least more famous than i am although be yourself and love it podcast is is becoming more more and more popular which i'm pleased about but no seriously i really believe in this book it is a series of ramps it will help you make things that are difficult for you easier for you bit by bit and in, in a realistic measure it's no woo woo it's not a funny it's not a magic wand it's very very practical great well let's have that url again and uh, anyone who is uh, stirred by your your rousing commentary then might want to open that uh tab in their browser right now so hit us where where, do, where are they going to go to download this free book be yourself and love it.com forward slash do it that's be yourself and do love it, it dot com forward slash do it that's what you want to do you want to do it do it and then after you've uh, clicked the link and downloaded the book um you can delete the do it part and check out be yourself and love it com and what will they find there tell us about your uh your oh thank you oh yeah um be yourself and love dot com is basically my home website it's the main thing on there is actually the course that I created called Surviving to Thriving. I wasn't going to plug the course because you're not really meant to give more than one call to action. But um, <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind just saying a little bit about it because again, this is the kind of thing. Like I was really into personal development after leaving school because I wasn't very happy. And the thing about personal development is it's a lot of trial and error, um, knocking on you know, reading a bunch of books, watching YouTubes. You, the thing is you have to try stuff to find out if it works or not and you've got no idea beforehand whether it's going to have a positive impact on you or not um, until you try it. So I guess uh, Be Yourself and Love It, sorry, the Surviving to Thriving program, which you can find at beyourselfandloveit.com, is basically my takeaways for from 15, 20 years of working on myself in a rational order, the right the exercises in the right order and if you're interested in yeah putting some serious work into getting more out of life i kind of condense my wisdom into that course and that's uh, on my website be yourself and love it.com under the course tab 
So, right, so to put yeah. things into priority, then then uh, that might be a, a graduate program for people who download your free book and and get through it and find it was valuable, but they want they want some more tools in their belt to uh, take control of their lives and and get things happening. Absolutely, and I do mention again the course at the at the bottom of the book. I'm also available for personal coaching and counselling. Um, so you can always keep that in mind to read the book and uh, my personality comes through it. If you like my approach, uh, then I might be the right person to work with. Great. And I'm assuming that you've put your uh, your contact details at the end of the book for people to um, reach out to you if they need to. It's all in there and it's all, all on right beyourselfandloveit.com. Thank you for having Excellent. me on the the rational rise I, I love the i love the name i just see like i know you're you're big into poli- and this is this book is a good tool for people who want to contribute to the um to ideas to the world because a lot of it just mills around in your head for ages and people have trouble putting it into form but the rational rise i just see you know some uh, cartoonish character from my childhood being like rise rise <laughs> yes Right. Sorry. Now people are going to think that I'm insane, and I need to see a therapist. But like, just <laughs> we all do. We all do. Let's be real. Watch the Let's spirit. The, the spirits of the beaten down and the zombies like rise and become rational and like. Well, yes, look, that was certainly uh, yes, certainly man, our sorry. our mission uh, in starting this this whole channel was to. Um, you know, create a space to encourage uh, conversations on, you know, controversial topics and on, uh, you know, big ideas and, and uh, that's going to yeah. keep going on. But, you know, it's it's been, um, the Rational Rise has been a, a hobby project for me that um, I've been very passionate about, but it's been hard for me to justify the amount of time mm. that's required to create content for it, especially the mm. post-production element. And that was why um, only a couple of weeks ago I, I came across the OBS um, broadcasting software and bing, light bulb moment, realized that if I do a live show and do it weekly using this software, I can have the production value that I want, but I don't have to sit in my studio for like a whole day editing. And that way mm. I've got no excuses left to procrastinate on creating content for The Rational Rise. So Anthony, thank you for being my first uh, guest on the live James Fox Higgins show on The Rational Rise. Well, I hope that, we can uh, have you on again. Thank you for having us. I'm very t- honoured. Very touched right, and honoured. And I'd be delighted to come back. Great, great. Well, we'll definitely have you. And uh, folks, one more time, that's uh, beyourselfandloveit.com forward slash do it. That's where you can get the free book on procrastination and how to beat it. And uh, the book title is Procrastination Annihilation, A Happy Ending to Human Tragedy. And it's got a fantastic cover with a, like a knight slaying a dragon, which uh, is, you know, the, the archetypal heroic image in my mind. So, uh, yeah, grab your copy. Anthony, thank you. Thank you. Hey guys, this is James Fox Higgins for The Rational Rise. I hope you enjoyed that presentation. If you like the content we're producing, there are a number of ways you can support us to help us make more. Head to our website, therationalrise.com, to read our written articles, sign up to our mailing list, and to view the t-shirts, mugs, and other merchandise that we have for sale. We'd also love it if you'd become a Patreon supporter, and for as little as $5 a month you can donate to our project to ensure that we're producing content every week to stimulate your mind. You can also purchase a copy of my book, The Ghost of Emily, which is available in paperback and Kindle editions from Amazon right now. It's action-packed science fiction loaded with philosophy. Otherwise, just hit like, share and subscribe to make sure more people find out about our videos and leave your comments below. See you next time.